Hey guys, welcome to the 168th C Sharp tutorial that I'm making for the new Boston. And in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to loop through um, everything in your class, treating it like a collection. So for this tutorial, you're going to need to have a button, um, a collection class, and inside of your collection class, just have a list of some sort and have it pass uh, something through your constructor, whatever type uh, your list is, and then just add that to your uh, list. So I just have it be a string, and the list is a bunch of names of people, and through the constructor right here, I just pass Adam. So let's say we wanted to loop through um, all these people inside of this collection. We couldn't do for each string s in my collection because it doesn't know what we're trying to loop through. We have to tell the C-sharp compiler that we want to loop through this collection right here. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is inherit from two interfaces. The first is the ienumerable interface and the second is the ienumerator. And we have to inherit from these because we have to provide implementation for um, a few methods inside of both of these so that the for each statement will be able to use those methods to loop through um, our collection successfully. So the first thing that we have to do right here is create um, a variable. I'm just going to make it an integer for our uh, the index of our collection. So I'm going to say int uh, position equals negative 1. So that'll be the default value for the position in our collection. And then we're going to have to provide um, implementation for the move next method. And all of these methods and properties will have to be public. So we're going to say public. Um, bool move next and this will basically um, tell the C-sharp compiler whether or not it's reached the end of the collection so we're going to say return um, position if it's less than um, the amount of elements in names so names.count alright and before we do that, we're just going to have to increase position by one so that it will move up. The position will move. All right, and the next one that we have to do is reset. And this is just a void, and basically it will reset the position to zero, not negative one. So, and basically this will just reset the position to negative one. So public void reset. And we're just going to say position equals negative one. So it just goes back to the default position. Then we are going to say um, current. And current will basically just return an object at the current position. So object um, current. And we're just going to um, the property here. So just going to say git return names and then at the current position, so position. Um, all right, there. And one last one we have to do here, it's an uh, I enumerator. So I enumerator get enumerator. And this will basically just return um, the enumerator for this class. So we're just going to say return right here. And we're just going to basically um, cast this class as an enumerator. So this to refer to the class that we're in. All right, so all of these methods that we just provide implementation for, you're probably like, wow, this is stupid. Why would I ever need to use any of these methods? Well, all these methods right here are going to be used by the for each statement so that we actually can loop through um, this right here. And notice how we said like names here and name.count and stuff like that. So this will tell the C-sharp compiler um, what collection we're actually trying to loop through in this for each statement right here. All right, so now if we say for each string in my collection, then we're just going to have a message box to show that name. So we're just going to say show s. And it should basically just show a message box of every person's name in this collection. Oops. Oh, this just has to be public. Yeah, like I said, all the methods have to be public or else it won't work. All right, and yep, we get Adam, and yep. So usually when you're doing this, you're going to want to have an indexer or something so you can treat it more like an array. 
but we already learned how to use indexers, so it shouldn't be a problem adding that to your class. So that's pretty much it for this tutorial, so see you guys.